oder Felden, die hier hinein starten. In 2 Minuten 30 geht es wirklich los. 2 Minuten 30 to take off. Alex Migos and Franzi Sterrer will be our first athletes. Oh, a new call. A new call. 5 minutes past then we kick it off. Okay, so relax. Take a seat and have 7 minutes till climbing. Four minutes, guys. Then we start it's today's series. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can yeah. you hear me? Yes. There we go. Okay. Lovely. Woo! All right. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Innsbruck in Austria for the 2021 IFSC World Cup. It's been a packed week of competitions and today it's the turn of the boulderers to shine. Four boulders stand in the way of our men and women athletes as they battle for a finals place as only six will make it through. My name is Matt Groom and I'm here with Hannah Schubert in the commentary box. Hannah, first of all, thank you so much for joining me this morning. No problem, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Hannah, last night we saw the lead finals, uh, a spectacular event, and your brother won, so congratulations for the Austrian team and a family <laughs> team. Yeah, it was amazing to watch. Like, when I came home, my whole family was there, like, welcoming me with, like, cheering because they knew I was there to see him, and it was a great final. I enjoyed it a lot. It was great cheering him on, and winning at home is something so special, and, I mean, he's done it before, um, at the World Championships 2018, but yeah, it was special and really cool to watch. I really enjoyed it. Amazing. Well, today it is the turn of the boulders, and that is our boulder wall here at the Kletter Centre gym. You just saw a weather report. 18, uh, 18 degrees, I wish. It is warm <laughs> here today. It's uh, absolutely baking, not a cloud in the sky. The boulder wall was in the sun earlier this morning. It's now in the shade, as you can see there, which is going to help the athletes. But Hannah, heat, it always plays a factor in terms of friction for the athletes. Will this be a problem for them as they compete here today? Yeah, as you said, like heat is definitely a factor. Um, 
it might play a role. Like I really don't know because the wall was only built up for the World Cup. I don't really know how long it is in the sun. And but definitely, like as you can see, the wall is not in the sun, but the mats, and that's heating up really quickly. So if you're resting on the mats or your shoes get really hot, that also make, plays a role while you climb. So especially for the first competitors, it might still be really hot. Um, yeah, we will see if that makes a difference. Maybe we will see some red faces, some hot <laughs> faces, hopefully no sunburns. <laughs> yeah, I'm coated in sun cream myself. <laughs> Currently on the screen is the men's semi-finalists. They qualified the other day. Top 20 athletes moving through into our semi-final. This is taking place this morning. And then from about 6 p.m. tonight, we have the finals for the men and women. That is our bouldering wall. And as Hannah said, this has been specially built for the occasion here in the Kletter Centrum gym. A long wall and mixed men and women's boulders. Hannah, you and me were walking on the mats earlier having a look at the boulders. What's your initial impressions of these semi-final problems? Mm, really hard to say. I think they have a bit of everything, which is always good, like a good mix of different styles. Like they have a slab, they have jump, they have presses, they have a fitness test piece so I think that's always cool to see like to not have like a round where it's like the same thing all the time but have like a mix of different styles and I think the root setters did a really good job I think being a root setter must be a horrible job like I feel like you never do it right I feel like it's always someone complaining so I'm always having huge respect of the people who do that and yeah I hope we will see a good show absolutely yeah the root setters working hard all week they've had to set a lot of problems, para climbing we had earlier in the week, the lead, of course, and now the turn of the boulderers. So they are running around like absolute maniacs getting everything ready for us. So we do appreciate that. So the semi-finals, four boulders for the men, four boulders for the women, five minutes on the clock in order to climb them. And only the top six go through. Hannah, something I was chatting to Chloe Collier about the other day was the standard of the women's qualification rounds. She was saying it's one of the hardest sets she's ever seen and that it has been a real battle. Have you noticed a real step up in terms of the difficulty of some of these climbs? <clears throat> yeah, I really think so. Like, I think the level is incredibly high, especially this year. Like, coming from the COVID break last year, you didn't know what to expect and it was great to see, like, such a high level. And, I'm, yeah, as Chloe said, I think they really stepped up. Right, first two athletes running out. Alex Magos, he was competing in the lead final last night. Let's hope he's managed to save some energy. And your teammate, Hannah. Yeah, Francisca Stella. Um, yeah, it's really cool to see her. Like, she was really yeah, kind of a bit lucky. Like, it's always lucky to get into semis, like, on, like, 10th place in her group. Um, yeah, she really thought she wouldn't make it. Like, she was really not so positive about it first. But, um... Yeah, um, I'm really happy she made it because she's in a really good shape right now. Like also in training, she feels great. Like she has never feel, felt better. So that's why she always was also was a bit frustrated about her climbing and qualification because she felt like she could have done a lot better. So it's great that she got the chance to show it again now. Both athletes on the wall at the moment. Alex Megos on the right hand side. Francisca on the left. Starting off, we'll be talking through these boulders as we go. We've got plenty of opportunity to check these out. And if you're new to climbing, we'll be explaining some of the more complicated rules, but the basics of a boulder competition is to get from the bottom of the wall all the way to the top of the wall. The bottom is indicated by that blue circle, which says start, and the two pink lines. Each pink line represents a different limb, and you have to be in control of each hold which has a pink line to it. So we'll have a look at that in a second. The top, well, that says top again in a blue circle, and the athletes have to match that with both hands and control that moment. They can't just snatch at it and then fall off. So if we watch Alex here, you can see one pink line on the left for his left foot, and then that volume with three, so three limbs on that as Alex goes up. The other thing to point out is that zone hold there. It says zone with a green line on it. Zones do count towards the overall score. The best score you can get is a top, which we might about to see Alex get. Then zones come next, attempts to top and attempts to the zone. All this will become clear, don't panic. Alex Magos then, aiming for that top. And Hannah, a hard slab to start things off for the men. Yeah, I mean, if you like slabs, maybe it's not hard, but usually, yeah, because it's 
for the most people, it's like really tricky to start with a slap. Also for your head, oh, yes. like it's always great if you start off a comp with a flash or like a top. I mean, of course, it's good for your like mental game. So yeah. We will see how many people will top the slab and get along with the comp really well. But I think Alex made really good progress on that one, like really quickly. Like up until the top, he made it look really smooth and really good. Alex is one of those climbers who I've talked to him about slabs a bit before, and he always claims that he doesn't like them. But I've seen him do wizardry on slabs. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there are those people who are like, yeah, I love slabs and I'm also good at them. And then there are those people who say they hate slabs, but they're still super good at them. So I'm like, why do you hate slabs? <laughs> You're really good at them. So. That was a moment worth talking about there. Alex used the green hole, but he hadn't touched all his hands on the purple volume. So watch this again. Right foot, right hand, and then left hand touches, controls, and then he can move off. This is important. And yeah, and I think he realized it and wanted to, like, do it, like going back from the green hole, but then he had to jump down because he already touched the green hole, so then it's over, like that attempt doesn't count, like he has to jump down. One minute 30 on the clock, these athletes get five minutes in order to do the boulder. If they run out of time, even by a second, it won't count, they won't get the top. So they Come do on, have Alex. to... Yeah, Alex getting that right foot on that tiny screw hold. And then a toe hook matching by his feet and going down. Hannah, that method, he's tried that a few times. Do you think it's just a case of continuing it and trying to get it into his body or perhaps different beta? Yeah, it's different to say. Probably it felt really close. It was like, okay, I have to try that again. Um, I think it might work, but I also think you can just do it without the toe hook, like standing up and trying to keep your left foot low instead of putting a toe hook because it feels like he's always almost coming out of the wall too much with his balance like losing balance there because of the toe hook. Francisca climbing next to him with 37 seconds to go. Slightly strange start to this women's one. It's almost a sort of a, it could either be a running start or as she's doing a sort of a press and a jump, but then you have to control it. And that's quite a difficult starting move. Yeah, it looks really hard. It's also a move where you can waste a lot of attempts. Like it's really hard to flash it. And that also costs time, so. Alex going up with the right hand that time. He's got 12 seconds, might not be enough time. He will have got the zone point, but not the top point. Francie did the start again, but she's going to run out of time. Oh, no. She, she tried that move to the zone really quickly. I thought you might have to do it more statically. Let's see how the other competitors try that. So we watch some replays of Alex going up to that top. If you want to follow the scores, the best way to do it is to download the IFSC app. It's pretty simple to do. Just go onto the App Store or whatever you use. Click on the IFSC app, download it, and that kind of updates you on the scores all the time. We will get regular updates on our screen. But that's just how you can follow along more closely. Two more athletes out on stage now. Ochian Berton of France and Nathaniel Coleman of America. Hannah, Ochian, 16 years old. This is her first senior season and so far she's impressed yeah it's incredible like it's also so much fun to watch her climb like I, I love her style and she and also what I love is you really see she's having so much fun out there and that's I think that's something that's like really yeah when you when you watch a climb, you immediately want to go to the climbing gym as well and climb. And that's something that not everyone has. And I love that about athletes. And yeah, she's totally crushing that season. I mean, a lot of people who know her from like the youth or from all the um, rock boulders and routes that she already did were expecting that. But you never really know. Like it's still different to be at the senior stage at the World Cup. So. Yeah, but she's doing a really good job so far. She is indeed. I was chatting to her the other day, and I said the same thing to her. I said, you have this style that's very exciting to watch because perhaps it's the fact she's 16, she hasn't done many of these events, but she seems to approach the boulders in a different way from everyone else, and she's got this creativity that's just She's wonderful. timing so smart. She's really using her head, yeah. That graphic down at the bottom, that indicates the boulder, so you can see M1, men's one, and again on the wall. That block will fill in if he manages to do it and then rank second at the moment that's because he's second out at the moment these scores being constantly updated because we've got 20 athletes competing here today oh, Nathaniel trying to do a different method that Alex was doing <laughs> just stretching it out there Nathaniel 
part of Team USA, who have a fairly large contingent here, and it's great to see them in Europe competing. Mimo Ochian just balancing her way up this slab, easily onto the zone. Nice job. Look at that Ooh. flexibility from Ochian. Oh, to be 16. <laughs> My hips yeah. creak when I watch something <laughs> like that happening. But flexibility is something that everyone, all the athletes that I know, certainly, it's, it's something that's fairly high up their priority list because it doesn't really matter how strong you are. If you're not flexible enough to get to the holds, then you're never going to be able to use them anyway. Exactly, yeah. And I think it also got more and more important in the modern style, like in the last few years, especially with like high heels or presses where you have to put your foot really high. And so I think a lot of um, athletes concentrate on it more and try to improve it more. Let's see if Jochen uses the same beta as she did before. Look really good. Yeah, she. perhaps you would have expected her to maybe qualify in a different position. So the athletes coming out first, they qualified last from the qualification round. And the athletes coming out last, they qualified first. So these athletes perhaps just just squeaking through into the semi-finals, but often it's almost sometimes a bit of a tactic because you don't want to give it everything in the qualification rounds, ruin your skin, pump yourself out, especially if you've got lots of climbing to come. Yeah, and I think uh, Oriana already did it in Salt Lake that she like went to semis pretty close, but then made it into finals. So sometimes it's good like <clears throat> to come from behind and then climb past everyone else. Oriane flipping things up here, using a different toe, and now she's going to have to press. Just can't find that balancing point. When we say press, we're talking about using your shoulders to push down on the holds, and there are quite a lot of pressy moves in this set of boulders. Yeah. I was surprised to see so many presses, actually. <laughs> we were like talking through the boards, we were like, oh, another press, oh, another press. But I mean, maybe it just looks like a press and you don't really have to do it, so. We will wait until the athletes show us how it's actually climbed. Exactly. 15 seconds to go on this second round. My name is Matt Groom. I'm here with Hannah Schubert, and we are in Austria for the 2021 IFSC World Cup. Five seconds to go. Nathaniel's still going for the top and just pops off. Now, after five minutes, the athletes will go backstage. They get to rest for five minutes, and a new rotation of athletes will come out. Now, so far, we've only seen two athletes on the screen, but things, things get a little complicated from now on, Hannah. A bit more busy. Exactly. Can you explain why we're seeing more athletes on stage? So they've, they've come off, they are sitting in the isolation area, they rotate, and obviously every athlete has to do the four boulders. And therefore, we've got 20 athletes to get through, so we're going to be seeing, by the end of it, athletes on every single one of the boulders, so eight athletes out on stage. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it's really cool like that. I mean, in finals, it's a different system, but here, it's, it's perfect that you have five minutes off, five minutes on, because if you would wait until everyone else climbed the first boulder, then you would be cold again, and you would have to start warming up right away again, because there would be such a long rest. So that system really works. I mean, it's busy for the people to watch, but it really works. And I think nobody would watch a semi that's like 10 hour long or something. So I guess it's also better for the spectators. It's busy, but it's always something going on. So it also can be really exciting. Francesca there on women's two. Now that hold she's holding with the left and where her left foot is, that's dual texture. There is very little friction on the black section of those holds. That was really good attempt, but really close already. Yeah, Francesca just looking up. As so, you can see, you're standing in the sun. So the, the part of the mat where you're standing, like where you're resting, where your chalk bag is, where you chalk up, where you rest is in the sun. So it's not perfect, but... Alex Magos on men's too. Quite a physical move, this one. Very different from the slab that we watched first of all. Sandra Letna and women's one here. <laughs> Also team member, <laughs> I like, yeah, uh, she's in the national team with me as well. She's living in Innsbruck for quite a long time already. She moved here um, to also to go to school, like a while ago. Finished school last year. 
I mean, Hannah, you're an athlete, as you said, you're in the Austrian team. We're in Austria. How exciting is it for the Austrian team and for yourself to be climbing, competing in your hometown? It's incredible. Like also, it helps so much. Like to know, to know the wall, to know, yeah, things around. And we also, especially for lead, we climbed so much on that wall, so it really helps, of course. Magos topping out that wall. That's his first top. That graphic down on the bottom right, you can see it's half full, which indicates a zone, and it will fill up all the way to indicate a top. So one top for Alex Magos and one zone currently. Good effort from Alex with two minutes to go. Let's see a replay of that moment. Bumping the left hand using those slopers. Left foot up and a bit of a jump, a bit of a pop to the top. And you can see grimacing <laughs> as he that locks really it off. That was really effort. Alex last night was in the lead finals. I can't imagine <laughs> the fatigue that he might be feeling now. How much, how difficult is it to swap your head from lead mode into bouldering mode? I think, especially the experienced athletes that have done both of them for quite a long time, I think it's easier. But yeah, of course it's, I mean, you even like, you warm up differently for lead and boulder as well. So it's not so easy, but I think most of the athletes who did both have done it pretty well, especially already like in qualification, like they already have a lot of comp days um, behind them, but still climbing really strong. So. That is Simon Lorenzi of Belgium getting a top on the first slab. First top on his ball there. Nice. Simon and Simon doing a lot of climbing in Fontainebleau, a very famous bouldering area south of France. So I'm expecting him to be good at his slabs. And as we just saw. Yeah, I think he did really, like in the past, he did really well at slabs. He already was really close to finals in Salt Lake City. So. Maybe this time, he definitely already showed that he's capable of being in finals. Sandra now trying to work out this tricky women's one. A zone for her so far, but no tops. That is Sandra. Come on, Franci. Oh, oh sorry, Francisca. Close. Sandra, what am I talking about, Francisca? 14 seconds to go. I don't think that's going to be enough time for her. Such a powerful boulder. Those beeps you can hear indicating the end of the athlete's five minutes. As we get a new rotation of athletes coming out, these guys on their second boulder, some on their first. Yannick Floe on man's number one. And we've got Katra Debevitz from Slovenia out as well. Yannick Flo there, just getting his competition started from Team Germany. What I wanted to say before as well about competing at home, I think it has advantages and disadvantages. It's so funny, I talked about it with Kara Condi last time. Um, because she said about um, having Salt Lake City, the home World Cups for her. Um, it's so weird because it's so hard as well to get into comp mode when you just like go to the gym you usually train at, like by bike, you sleep at home, you're, like, you're not staying with the team in a hotel, you're staying at home, yes. you're going to the gym by bike or, what, or by bus, whatever, just as usual, like as you would go to training. And it can be really nice, but it can also be hard to switch into like comp mode then. So yeah, it has both sides, I think, good and bad sides. That's a very good point. Sort of switching from normality into comp mode is yeah. difficult if it doesn't feel like a competition, you know. Nathaniel Coleman getting his first top. He got a zone on men's one. Good nice. effort from him. Certainly one of the athletes we'd expect to be challenging for the finals, and we'll have to see how he does. Oh, wow, there was a flash. Good job. Nathaniel. Easy Fanta for him. So a flash, that's one of those terminologies we throw around a lot. Could you just explain what a flash is? Flash is when you um, top the boulder in the first go. Like you just use one attempt to climb up that boulder. And that flash is rated higher than normal. So on that attempt, so we get a top, we get a zone as our scoring, and then attempts to top. So if things get tight, Flashes on boulders become very, very important, and we'll certainly see that in the finals later on today. Definitely. 
Ochrian Berton on those dual texture holds now. No friction on the black section that she's holding on to. But it is a fairly good hold, even though it is dual textured. That's true. Oh, just missing out. I think those volumes are not really the best, and it's really hard to hold that tension. Like, she really tried to squeeze them, but I think it's really hard when, you, when your feet cut loose as well. Yannick Flo now nearing the top. Goes up with the right, just pops that foot. You can see he was setting himself up for the move. Just lost a foot there. Plenty of time though, two minutes 15 on the clock. Yeah, that's the fall we just saw on men's one. It's also a thing with slabs, like because you usually have to climb them really slow, you don't really have a lot of time. Like five minutes can pass really quickly and sometimes you can only use like two, three attempts on them because you're in there for such a long time because you have to Climb slowly, not hesitate at all. Katja Debovitz of Slovenia on women's one. Ochian now trying a right hand pinch and then she's gonna try to get that foot drilled into the hole, left hand up to the zone. You really need that flexibility we were talking about earlier. Huge power, power scream. scream. <laughs> I think we should do power scream bingo. Yeah. She's a good one in power streams. Yeah. That's also something, yeah, like such a young athlete being like so emotional, so explosive. It's like so cool to watch. Ah, that's a great replay of that. <laughs> I have to think, I want to be filmed my life in slow motion. It would look so much more dramatic. <laughs> Definitely. Everything looks more dramatic in slow motion. Yannick Flo then with a minute to go. No zone for him so far, although I'm fairly sure I saw him touch the zone, so that score might be updated. Yeah, for sure. Yannick again losing the foot. Oriane, she's got time, 40 seconds. Will she be able to stick this power move now? Let's see. Oh, nice. Keeping the foot. Ah. That's totally what I different approach, a yeah. static approach. Yeah, but that. that's what I said before. I think it's really hard to hold those two volumes without the feet. So I think if you can keep the feet, that's like a factor that will make it a lot easier and probably is necessary. Yannick's going to be running out of time here with 13 seconds to go. Good morning if you're just joining us. The sun is shining here in Innsbruck and we are at the semi-finals for the men and the women. The finals taking place later on this evening. The athletes get rotated. Toffee, United States of America, and Kylie Cullen. As we see the athletes coming back on, Yannick Flo there just taking his time walking back, having a moment to. Uh, <laughs> he's getting chivied on by the judge there. I think he was cheekily just checking out his next boulder. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I saw him when, when um, the woman said, yeah, you have to walk faster and go. He was like, yeah, um, we're looking at the floor. I think the floor is just really hot. And when you're walking with your climbing shoes, like you have no time to take them off. And then walking with your climbing shoes in the sun. I mean, I cannot walk fast with my climbing shoes on. Usually they're pretty tight. Yeah, so. the hobble walk. Alex Magos on M3. Oh, yeah, that's exactly how I... How I thought you would climb it. And such a high right foot. And the press with the left hand, so that's how a press looks like for anyone who doesn't know. Yeah, you read that absolutely correctly. That's what you called it straight away. Alex with a big drop knee. Looks really good. He's going to have to set himself up for a jump. One top so far for Alex. He's going to be looking for another. Uh, just a bit short. Oh, he's angry about that one. Yeah, frustration from Alex, but he's got time. Let's see this again, just popping up and... Yeah, yeah just missing the good part of the hold. But I mean, he made it up there really easily, so he probably will do it again. Colin Duffy, one of many, many Olympians climbing here today. He also climbed in lead semis yesterday. So it's his fourth day in a row competing. Might feel that a little bit, at least. <laughs> but it's a good practice for the Olympics, definitely. Exactly, and that's what a lot of our Olympians are doing at the moment, is using these competitions as practice. We're weeks away from the Olympics now. Disappointment there. Yeah, there was a foot slip right at the end. 
her right foot slipped and then she was a bit short. Her sister's going to have to do it all over again. That will not count. She hasn't controlled that hold or matched it. Simon Lorenzi now as he gets set up for this physical blue problem. Ooh, good job. I think that's a replay. I think he already walked up the stairs. Now we saw the second top. Yeah, that confused me briefly why he, <laughs> he got the points. Alex Magos topping out, getting the good part of the hold this time. Little fist bump out to the audience. Two tops for him. Hip hop blasting through the stadium here, getting everyone psyched. Yeah, that's what they need right now. You see, like, the audience all on one side because one side is completely in the sun. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely scorching here in the stadium. Colin Duffy with a minute 40 to go. Let's see if he can unlock this tricky slab as he pants his feet up. I mean, just to, sorry, just to clarify, like, there's no audience allowed in the Plata Centrum here, but it's just uh, other competitors which I think is really nice because then at least you have some people cheering and like having a completely empty stadium as an athlete would not be nice. Colin Duffy topping out. I, I agree with you, Hannah, and something I've noticed with the athletes being in the audience is you get this really educated audience. So sometimes when you get crowds, general public, people are cheering about everything. They're going crazy, which exactly, is wonderful. Yeah. But with an audience of athletes and coaches, They'll cheer in moments where you wouldn't normally expect them to because they'll, they'll realize the athlete has unlocked something. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's really special. But I also feel like the athletes cheer a bit differently than usual because they know there's no other audience. So they're kind of like cheering for everyone. I mean, I'm not saying that's not always like that, but sometimes it's like just the French team cheering the French team, Austrian team cheering the Austrian team. But here it's like because they know there's no other audience, they cheer for everyone. Francisco, can she match? She does this time. First top, really happy about that. Yeah, it was so close before, so it was really important for her. And also, yeah, I mean, when you're so close already, falling at the top move, then you desperately want to do it. So it's really great that she finished that one. Yeah, relief and joy on her face. We saw the leaderboard just then on the right-hand side, showing the number of tops and zones. Oh, just dropping the top. Sandra at left net. That move looks really hard to control, especially also moving from it now, because we saw Oriane sticking it with her foot, but then her feet got loose, and it's really hard to move from it, I think. And those volumes might also not get better, like with people climbing on it and the heat and everything, that might be really slippery. Same with the slab at, at the, the men's slab, the first boulder. I feel like that small screw-ons might be really dirty at the end of the round. Yeah, we haven't seen a top on women's two yet. Tomowaki Takata out on his semi-finals. Big Japanese team, which is always great to see. At a finals, Petra Klingler from Switzerland. Previous world champion, of course, in bouldering. And Yannick Flo. Petra also had some pretty busy days competing. Like she didn't compete yesterday, she had a rest day yesterday because she didn't make semis in the lead, but she also did speed, the speed European Cup and on Wednesday after league qualification. <laughs> so she really didn't miss out on any of the comps happening in the past few days. That is Nathaniel Coleman, he's got one top so far, two zones. We're looking for another top on men's three. This jump that we saw Agos miss, Magos miss and then get! Big move from Nathaniel, and he sticks that dyno. Good job. That looked really solid. The Seem other, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it seems like two and three are the, the boulders you kind of have to top. Like, I mean, I'm not saying they look easy because all of these boulders are really hard. But um, when you see like boulders being topped so early in the round, you can sometimes expect like them to have to be done for finals. So. Probably with three tops, you're already in a really good position. Like, you don't know, of course, until the end of the round. We also haven't seen both the four yet, but two and three look really toppable. Catch it, Debovitz. Really good progress on this one. Slovenia, really could we good. see our first top here? Yeah, come on, get it. 
Nice, really precise. She held those two volumes really well. They looked a lot better than <laughs> when the other competitors had it in her hand. I think her foot position and was really good and she was really stable and could put a lot of weight off her hands with her feet. Ah, oh, big move from Ochlian, almost sticking it. Yeah, that's a really good point, I think, because sometimes you'll watch a boulder and it will look impossible. And then another athlete will come out and, and absolutely cruise it. And it's just, it's sometimes the smallest things that you change can make such a big difference. Yeah, definitely. And also, I mean, everyone has, like, prefers a different style. So some people are just really good at slaps, some people are really good at jumps, some people are really good at power boulders, and also the, um, the different type of hold. Some people are really good at pinches, so I'm in crims and stuff like that, so it's so hard to tell how hard a ball is because some people just prefer, prefer that style and then they cruise it and nobody else has a chance. You can see how bright that sun is. I've just put on sunglasses in my commentary box and I'm inside. I can't see anything, so tough conditions for these athletes as we watch Yannick topping out. Mawaki now, can he get a top on men's one again, a foot pop. We're seeing that so often on that tricky slab. Yeah, as I said, I mean, those screws on are already really small and not so good, but they probably get more and more dirty, especially when people slip on them. They always leave like a bit of rubber off their shoe on them. You can sometimes see they're getting a bit black. So that means maybe like a bit of their shoe, of the, the shoe of the athletes was left on there. And that's not great for the next athlete to come out. I mean, they can always brush in between with the brushes, but still, it's not as good as new. Petra Klingler can't quite get that done with a minute to go. She has got time, though. She chalks up. Now, Petra with two chalk bags going on here. Just, oh, hurry out, just getting the swing. And good job. Goes for this zone. You see, Orian has this ability <sighs> to turn on the pace sometimes and really just step it up. Yeah, she really did that now. But now there was a bit of hesitation. Like she did it really quickly. Maybe thought the next hold would be better. Like overpowered a little bit. Well, probably was so psyched to stick the jump. She just wanted to go like really quickly right away. Tomowaki now as he eyes at the top. Ah, oh, and just seemed to drop that crimp. I thought he was fully on it. Yeah, me too. But oh, he's gonna do another attempt. Speed That's run gonna now. be enough. <laughs> That's gonna be crazy. Um, I don't think that's going to be enough. I mean, rushing a slab in 10 seconds is never Usually easy. not working. <laughs> yeah. uh, but he really... Uh, I think he actually had it, but I think his left foot came out and then he lost balance and like his body was just too far away from the wall to hold it because it's not such a good hold. So for the first time, we see boulder number four now. Yeah, that's Francisca Stera on boulder number four. Sort of a running move this. You start on the right-hand side, and you have to run across the black volumes and then launch yourself for the big yellow hold. Andrzej Pachak of Slovenia. His teammate, Janja Garnbrett, winning the women's lead last night. In some style, it's got to be said. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we know that from Yanya already. Like, if she wins, she usually wins in style. It's always great to watch. Never gets boring. Francisca now made the jump. We'll watch a replay of that in a second. And using the heel to rock up into this pressy section. Well, good job to do the jump right away. She really likes those styles, though. I think Andrew was really good, um, really impressive to watch in the last few Baldwin World Cups. Like, he looked really strong already. Yeah, always one. You can pull it out of the bag. Right, Colin Duffy. I think we're watching a replay here of his moment. Oh, easy top for Colin. That looked really easy. No problem at all. And that's the control we're talking about. You have to have two hands on the top. You have to hold it. It's not a matter of time. There's not a time limit on how long you have to hold it for, but you do have to demonstrate control. That's one of those things that makes me very glad I'm not a judge sometimes. Yeah, I think sometimes it's really hard to decide, yeah. 
Because some people also match the top hold like really short, but it's controlled. But do you have to say like three seconds or only controlled? So it's really hard sometimes. Also controlling the zone, controlling the zone, controlling the top. Especially on slabs, controlling the zone sometimes. You don't really have weight on it, you just touch it. So, yeah. Well, this is something I was actually chatting to uh, the judges about this morning. Because I was saying, look, if, if you just get a finger on it, do you get the points for that? And they were saying, no, you have to show you're using it in some way. Even if that's yeah. just your tendon standing out in your arm as you press into it, that's yeah. enough. Exactly. I think some people actually, I mean, athletes know that and they know they have to move or do like some sort of action that they know they're using it. So they actually do that to show the judge, hey, I'm using it. So they actually think about it while climbing. So do they give it to me right now? now? Is it enough now? So they kind of think about it. Andre Kumin of Switzerland as Alex Magos drops M4. That looks like a real powerful boulder, I think. We haven't seen a lot of it yet, but we will. Just to keep you updated on scores, currently your teammate Francesca is leading the way for the women with one top and three zones. And for the men, as I just have a little look here, for the men, I would have a little look with the... Uh... <laughs> yeah, Francisca and Katya are the only women to have a top yet. I mean, still a lot to come, but we have, we have seen more tops in the men. Yeah, Magos leading the way at the moment with two tops and three zones. Sorry, two tops, <laughs> two zones. And that is our leaderboard as I speak. Alex Magos leading the way. Nathaniel Coleman in second and Sam Lorenzi currently in third place. Expect that to change though, we've got a lot of athletes to come. And uh, just slipping off this men's slab. Not long to go now, last minute. Those boxes on the right hand side of the score, a full box means a top, a half a box means a zone. Francesca Stella at the top at the moment with one top and three zones. We're going to see a replay here from Simon Lorenzi. Simon. Oh, nice. Good job. Oh, I think that means, yeah, that's his third top. Wow, that puts him in a really good position already. Three tops before going to the last boulder. That's really good effort. Yeah, he's on form at the moment. Outside as well, he climbed the sit start to a very famous boulder problem in Fontainebleau called the Big Island. He did the sit start to that. Considered perhaps one of the hardest boulders in the world. Athletes run out as we get another rotation and a lovely wide shot of our wall. Specially built for this event here in the gym and our leaderboard on the right hand side. We watch the athletes just cleaning the holds. It used to be the case that there were volunteers to help do that, but due to coronavirus regulations, the athletes themselves do the brushing nowadays. And that's actually something that a lot of athletes have been talking about because it takes away time from your climbing. And also physically, it can actually be quite hard work brushing some of these boulders. Exactly. Like Jakob, for example, hates it kind of like he says yeah it's so much time and also like if you just don't have to worry about it you're like okay the other people i mean there are some athletes who like to clean by themselves because they're like i'm doing it the best kind of and i know how i want to clean but yeah it takes a lot of time and effort as well yeah and you want to rest and it's no rest when you clean because sometimes you have to brush really hard especially when it's volumes and then you yeah waste energy and time so it's not perfect but yeah, that's what COVID brought us, <laughs> kind of. We have to adapt to new challenges. <laughs> exactly. We're all doing it. And coronavirus regulations, very strict here in Austria, but definitely for the good of everyone, as we see a top from Yannick Floe. That looked pretty easy. Yeah, plenty in time for him. So many potential finalists here yeah. in the semi-final. That's true. Oh, that looked really good. Come on, Orian. Ah. No top so far for Orian. Oh, I think 
has anyone been so close on that slab on number one? Like we haven't seen so many people being in that position. Still looks really hard to move from that door. Ah. Petra Klingler now eyes up the final hold. And we see nice. another top of that boulder two could, women's two. You could see her thinking, should I go with right, should I go with left? And then deciding for the left hand. Because I think you could do both, but probably left is easier or feels better. But she was, you could see her deciding left, right, left, right. Okay, left. <laughs> and it worked, so I'm happy for it. <laughs> Yeah, instincts playing quite a big role in these. The athletes don't get to see these boulders beforehand. It's an on-site format. So they are literally working it out on the fly here. Slightly different in the finals, where they get an observation time. Tomoaki Takata. This little tricky start. Now, Hannah, this is something that I always find difficult in my own climbing. Is co oh, big fall there. It's coordinating various limbs at various different times. So when you have to jump, you have to work out your foot is toe catching a certain hold, your hand is catching another way. Yeah, climbing is a really, really complex sport. <laughs> it can be, especially in bouldering. Yeah, you have to, everything has to work at the same time. Oh, I think we haven't talked about who's at the first border right now. Together with Orian, he's like one of the youngsters and like maybe not surprises, but like stands out of the season. Like Absolutely. Silver medal a couple of weeks ago in Salt Lake for Mejdi Schalk. He's got a minute left. And same with Orian, like he has such a cool style of bouldering as well. Like really dynamic, really um, good. Yeah, just good body movement. Really makes it work and just looks great on the wall. Hello, if you just joined us to the semi-finals here in Innsbruck. It's a beautiful day and we've got some fantastic climbing ahead of us. As Nathaniel Coleman, he presses his way up this nice. orange boulder. We haven't seen so much of that one yet. Looks like. Yeah, come on, Nathaniel. Nice, that's a good job. Oh, in the last 15 yes. seconds, how close. Great job from him, muscling his way through that final move. Let's watch this again. Really powerful. Then out with the right, holding the swing and one arming it to finish off. <laughs> Casual as you like from Nathaniel. So, new athletes joining us and athletes leaving after they've done their four boulders. Chloe Quillier of Belgium carrying a little bit of an elbow tweak at the moment. You can see taped up on that left hand side. She was telling me that she's almost seeing this boulder, this competition is a bit of fun because she's injured, she's going into it with no pressure. Sometimes that works out for the best. Exactly, Lexi Rubsov, an Olympian. I just hope she's not injuring it more with the competition like that would be really bad. Oh, Colin Duffy taking a spectacular. I've been told that's a Tetris fall. <laughs> you know, when you fall in the same body position until you hit the mat. Oh, really? I never heard that before. That's interesting. <laughs> so, you know, Learning something new here. Well, you know, in Tetris, when the blocks come down in the computer game, they're in the same position all the way until ah, they touch the bottom. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> wow, powerful move there from Andrea. Yeah, making sure nice. work of that boulder too. Good job. Really good. The wall currently mercifully in the shade, being protected by that awning. Heel hooking that dual texture hold, locking off the crimp, slapping the top. Points on the board for her. Let's 
Simon Lorenzi just taking a swing. Although three tops so far from him, I'm looking for a full house. Hannah, talk me through that kind of a maneuver, that swing the athletes are doing. What are they trying to achieve with that kind of a movement? Um, they're trying to swing the foot out to get the momentum to swing to the like left, in this case, left side. So they try to get as much swing as possible to the in the direction where the next hold is. So using your foot, uh, if you understand something from like the body prepositions, then you know that like swinging out your foot gets you momentum, and then you can try to use that momentum to get into the right direction. And that's exactly what you did here. Problem with momentum though is once you've initiated it, it can be hard to stop it. Yeah. And you can see her legs swinging out wildly as she grabs exactly. that hold. It's really hard to explain that because I don't really know the vocabulary <laughs> in, in England, but I tried, I hope it made sense. It made sense, Hannah. Sorry, putting you on the spot with that one. <laughs> Colin Duffy sideways now. Looks like he's really like stretched out like a sea star there, like really far away in the right foot. Come on, Sandra. Whoa. Looks really hard to move from there, like all, all four on one hold, like both hands and both legs. And Zephahak getting a top. Thumbs up to the judge, just checking, making sure it's all good. Reaching through. Not proving too difficult on that men's number two. A few athletes yes. getting through that now. As Alexei Rutsov, he tops out that slab bowler. Nice. I think the top on a slab can be really crucial, like can be really important. Because as we've seen, like a lot of people topping two and three, so having a top on number one is really important. Chloe Collier on the women's one. Just loses the left. Tries desperately to get it back on. Four seconds to go. And the last athlete on the mats for her. Right until the very end, she's fighting. We're about halfway through now. Half the athletes almost have come out onto the mats. There's the leaderboard so far. Nathaniel Coleman leading the way with three tops. Simon Lorenzi, Simon Lorenzi with three. And Mr. Alex Magos with two. And for the women. Francisca Stera leading the way at the moment. And there's a man who's been on the scene for a while, Jan Hoyer. Let's see what he can do with the slap. Jan Hoyer, a machine of a climber. Tall and imposing. And on the women, it's Potaba Ito, which we've also seen climbing in the lead semis yesterday. So also her fourth day competing. <laughs> Doing everything. Yeah. But also really good at everything. So. <laughs> She's indeed a true all-rounder. Let's watch the beater on this, because we've seen a few different ways of doing it. Your hands, high foot. Let's see what Ito does here, Fito by Ito does here. She's trying to do a press up now. Yeah, pressing up, putting the foot up. That looked really good, really smooth. Yeah, absolute control for her. But this, what she's holding on to with the right hand, and I say holding on, <laughs> it's absolutely tiny. Are we going to see a top? Yes! Good job. Wow, that was that was amazing. She made this look just yeah, that was flawless.
catched yet on the final women's four. We haven't really seen much of that jump yet. I'm sure we will soon. Mejdi Shal now. We've seen a lot of athletes topping men's two out. And he uses a very dynamic style, different from the static approach that we've seen others do. I think the top is actually a good hold, but because it's turned to the left, it's still hard to hold this, like such a big swing as he got here now. You can see he almost tried to switch his hands around in midair there. Trying to save it. But maybe now that you get a feeling of how good the hold is, he will try to go there a bit less dynamic and can do it next go. Anako Kyura in action for Team Japan. And Yannick Floet. See eyes the top. <laughs> drop of the music there to the drop of him. Another uh, go, Mitsuki. Tops all over the place now is Tomoaki Takata. That's what it looks like. Another top for him. All nod to the audience. Petra Klingler, meanwhile. Leaping out behind him. We're just watching a replay of this. There might have been a slight incident. Let's see if he controls it properly. He's there. I think he got that. He had a little chat to the judge, but looked okay to me. Yeah, I think... I feel like it's always good to just, like, if you feel you're controlled, maybe put the head back and check with the judge. Like, I don't know, like, get a nod or whatever, just to be sure. That's always the most safe thing to do. Like, if you're in a position where you can just turn your head, look to the judge and get the okay, that's probably the best thing to do. Catching out a minute to go. Let's have a look at this jump from her. Good first hold. And it flew it. With two tops at the moment. Can't quite work this out. 30 seconds to go, he's going to call it a day. The athletes, of course, don't have to stay out for the full five minutes. And sometimes, I mean, every climb has done it. You, you find a boulder problem that you just know isn't going to go in that time. And it's better exactly. sometimes to walk away and save a bit of energy and skin. Exactly. Especially when it's, like, not the last boulder and, like, the first, second or third. Then you want to save some for the next. Mejdi gets a top. Oh, nice. He made that toe catch work. Maybe that was the beat that the root setter is intended, but nobody else did. He made it work now. Now we've seen that beat as well. Yeah, it's always fascinating, especially with the semi-final when we see so many athletes trying the boulders, really noticing the differences in styles. Mejdi deciding to do this quite dynamic way with the toe catch. Then he's got to match it. Makes it look easy, but we know that. Fairly tricky move. Yeah, we have another teammate of mine coming out. <laughs> Nikola Uchnik. He has also already proved in this season that he's really strong and in really good shape. I mean, he wasn't completely happy with his performances because he knows he can still do better. So that he knows, like, he knows that there's the room for improvement. But, um, yeah, I mean, if you're already, your performance is really good and you still have room for improvement and think you can do better, I think that's perfect. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope he can show his full potential now here in Innsbruck. That was Francis Julia Chanodi. Known perhaps more as a lead climber, but very, very handy on a bouldering wall as well. She's climbed 9B outside, which is right up there in terms of difficulty. There is Nikola Uznik. Shubia also go. climbed in semis, indeed semis yesterday. I think 10th place, so really close to finals. So also her fourth day on, <laughs> like a lot of others in the women category that we already saw and still to come. Chloe Collier sticking the power move up to that big dish. Can she finish this off? 
Chloe eyeing up the hold. Goes left, doesn't quite make it work. <laughs> Screams in frustration. You have to remember the foot she was standing on is dual texture, so it's slippery. It's only plastic, like there's no friction on it as well. So it's yeah, really not so comfortable to stand on it. They tend to work when you're still, <laughs> and the second you put a bit of movement into it, that's when the pop happens. Exactly. That's why she was okay when she didn't move, but once her left hand, like, left the hold, it was really hard to hold that tension again. Colin Duffy brushing up in his first holds. Nikolai adding his way up this slab, now moving slowly, you have to. Speed is not your friend on these kind of climbs. Start looks really smooth, but as we've seen, the top part is really hard as well. Right, business end, that right foot, watch the pop though, because it can slip. Goes up, great move yes, from him to finish nice. things off. That was really good, really important. Psychologically, that's men's one, he's got a top for it. Is it important to enter, to come into the competition with a top? Because if it was me and I was falling off the first boulder, I think it might unsettle me for the rest of the competition. Yeah, like definitely it helps. I mean, of course you should never, like also if you don't top the first boulder, give up right away because you have three boulders to go. And that's all part, also part of the game and part of the mental game to still stay confident, stay positive, and try to give your best at the next three. Because most of the time, also if you don't know, uh, if you don't climb the first one, you can still make it to finals if you do well in the others. But of course, like it motivates you even more. Like for some people, it's always when they start the round really well, then they just have a run and top everything. And when it the, the doesn't work the first boulder, they're like really struggle. So, it always helps. <laughs> Chloe, so, Chloe, it's yeah. not over if you don't do it, but it always helps. Well, there you go. Chloe battled through her psychological issues with that one because she dropped the top, got straight back up there, and she sends that second boulder. <laughs> Having fun, clearly working And for now her. she used to heel, if you see. Like, before she used her toe. She was standing with her toe before. Now she chose to put a heel, probably being more stable like that. Julia Shanodi having a look. Ah, action all over the shot. Every camera angle is something else. So exciting to see. It's always difficult with these semi-finals. There's so much action to be able to follow it on camera, but so far I think the production team doing a great job of watching the action. Kyle Coolen from the USA as he she boosts up. Julia getting established on this women's one, which just not managing to make it work yet. She's got the zone though, and she's calling it a day with 10 seconds remaining. <laughs> Colin just taking a little stumble. Hope he's okay. Might be tired. A little bit understandable after his fourth day competing and just finishing the round. Daniel Coleman still leading the way for Team USA in the semi-finals by Simon Lorenzi and Colin Duffy. Now the reason that Colin and Yannick Flo are separated is because of the attempts to the top. So they've got the same score in terms of zones and tops, but it's the attempts that start to make a difference. So earlier we were chatting about how important flashes are to a competition. This is where we get to see it. It's the way the athletes are separated. Petra Klinger. Enjoying the music there. Good vibes here in the stadium. Right, Sugimoto on men's one. Yeah, quite a few Japanese athletes in semis here, as always. And here's another team member of mine, Johanna Felva, on women's number one. She's one of the few not training in Innsbruck. Like most people train here in Innsbruck or moved here or always lived here. But um, she um, still living in Graz and training at Blockhouse in case some people have been there already. It's especially for bouldering, it's great. Especially for modern style of bouldering. They have a lot of slabs, they have a lot of dynamic moves and coordination moves, but also some power test pieces. So it's a great way a great place to train bouldering. 
it's a really big gym, so whenever you're in Graz, check it out. No commercial here. <laughs> like, it's just... <laughs> Other climbing just, gyms are available. Just, I just recommend it. <laughs> Yeah, well, I haven't actually visited, so I'll have to, uh, I'll have to swing by. So. Yeah, and it's not only, like, I think there are a lot of good um, big climbing gyms out there, but it's also about the quality of setting, and they also have really a lot of hard boulders, especially for comp climbers. It's nice to have, like, a, enough to do, but it, because I think in some gyms, they just, a comp climber goes there one time and then flashes everything, and then there's nothing to do anymore, but that will not happen in Graz, I think. <laughs> It's funny you say that. I, uh, I had a little session in the wall yesterday and uh, I was talking to Alex Kazanov, who was my commentator last night. He was playing a game with a few athletes where they were going around trying to flash every single one of the top three hard boulders in the gym, which they succeeded on doing. So they had to really? climb it. They flashed everything. Not flashy, but they had to, that was the game, was to try to flash it. Okay. But I'm fairly sure they ticked the gym yesterday, which is uh, yeah. just a casual day for them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe it's also not perfect here. I mean, um, I think the boulders downstairs here in Innsbruck, um, the color borders are mostly set for like, yeah, normal people, I would say, like non-competitors. But that's why we also have like a wooden board and the wall upstairs um, where it's just like full set of holds. So you set boulders to yourself. So for people where it's, the boulders are too easy, they can still set themselves their own. Jan Hoyer getting a top as you watch Petra rocking up with the heel onto this pressy section. So, so physical. She matches. There's very little to go off on the right-hand side of that hold. And we also missed to mention a top from Futaba Ito on board the number two. Action all over the place. Do download the IFSC app if you want to keep live scores of what's going on. Johanna now, she works her way up, pressing looking for the high right foot. Actually, Futaba put herself in first position with that top, and she has two flashes. So that's a really good position she's in now. Your oh, nice. Top. That's really important. Good work. Made it really nicely, like, not hesitating, being really stable and focused and, yeah. Making that work really well. Using her thumbs as well. Thumb catching is what we call it. It's a thumb catch when you use your thumb just to press underneath like an undercling for the thumb. Yeah, it's mostly to keep your balance close to the wall and making sure you're not drop out. Because, yeah, you're not actually holding something. It's just to make it stay closer to the wall. Exactly. Anyone wanting to hold an undercling thumb press, that's pretty impossible. <laughs> it's just about balance at that point. Right, Sugimoto. I think this might be his last attempt on that. Has a look at the clock, 15 seconds to go. Action packed semi finals here so far under the blazing sun here in Innsbruck, Austria. And there's Matt Groom. We've got Hannah Schubert here. And we're both sweating in the commentary box, bringing you all the action. <laughs> Yeah, weather forecast here in Innsbruck, or yeah, in Tyrol, but especially in Innsbruck, it's not really reliable. <laughs> I think it was supposed to rain all day today, <laughs> really? but also the last few days, and sometimes it did, sometimes it was just burning sun and blue skies, so yeah. Fita by Ito leading the way, followed by Petra Klingler and Katja Debovitz in the top three at the moment. Laura Rogera has just come on on the far right. She was competing in the lead finals last night. Miguel Mawam, another Olympian to be on this stage. That's Laura there as she starts off her boulder competition. Let's see if last night's comp has taken a toll on her in terms of fatigue. Especially because she not only climbed in semis in lead, also in finals, so. Yeah, and a late night for those athletes for the finals. They wouldn't have got out of the stadium till probably half ten at night. They've got to go back to the hotel, somehow That's relax, true. sleep, and then come really early in the morning for the isolation zone. Yeah. Maybe some of the athletes who climbed the lead finals yesterday were still a bit pumped, so they didn't have to warm up as much as this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a thing? I don't know. Like, I mean... Well, if you have like two rest days, like complete rest days before the comp, 
you might need a bit more time to warm up because you just like need more time yeah kind of to yeah get into the feeling of like yeah, yeah well, of like sense. getting active and like moving and waking up your body um, but yeah I mean I guess when you climb late at night you can still be a bit tired in the morning like not having a pump but like still being like the toners of your muscles still being quite high if you say it like that in English as well yeah no, we know <laughs> what you mean don't you worry trust me I couldn't be speaking in German right now but, uh, you'd hear some nonsense from me Laura Rogera. I would love to hear that nonsense though. <laughs> I have one German phrase and I'll tell you that later. Okay. <laughs> Probably not one. That's fitting for that commentary. Yeah. It's actually a very boring phrase, but uh, yeah, fairly irrelevant. Laura, thumb pressing up to that top. Stretching, stretching, stretching. Matches, controls. Making it work. Stays up there a long time just to make Good sure. Job. Yeah, you have to be patient. Not moving too quickly. Watch a replay of that moment. There you go, matching it. Hands spread out. Great effort from her. Alexi now, as he eyes up this jump. Pops up, goes. Big slap and a swing. Nice. Makes it work. Three tops currently for him. Puts him in current third position already. And he still hasn't attended the last border, so that's really good. Yeah, a lot of tops going down so far. Especially in the men. The women won one top and a lot of zones already puts you in a really good position. But now as we see like the, the athletes coming out that were like really good in qualification already, we expect to see more and more tops. I mean, it's not always the case, but of course the people um, qualified for semis um, in first five or six or seven position are usually really strong. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, all of them are strong, but <laughs> like the strongest. Nikolai Uznik getting the top. Nice, second top for him. Yeah, great effort. Just a little replay of that moment. You can see just adjusting that right hand, pressing into the wall with the inset of his left foot. <laughs> Tongue out. That's not important, but it's good to see. <laughs> And yeah, relief from him as he comes down. Mikhail working his way up the slabs of that men's one. 38 seconds to go. Delicate moves, the athletes tending to wear slightly softer shoes usually for boulder problems. You want to feel the nuances of that plastic hold. You want to be able to smear. And smearing is when you press the rubber of your climbing shoes onto a hold. The more rubber you have on the hold, the more grip you have. And therefore, a slightly softer shoe is often the way forward. Julia jumps up with four seconds to go. She's not going to have time. Frustration for her. It looks like she was beginning to unlock that sequence. Well, we took more time to figure out the starting position, or like how to do the first few moves. Some of these boulders are really tricky and you need time to find out the best method. So sometimes five minutes can pass really quickly. <laughs> Absolutely. Goes in a heartbeat. Peter by Ito currently leading the way with two tops. Oh, there we go. On screen and then Petra Klingler. Katja Debevitz in third place. Almost all of our athletes competing now. We are last third to come out. The athletes coming out in order of last. Ito by Ito there, swinging in. Ah, now that's, we've talked about this before, but Kai had the there, not correctly starting. Remember those pink lines indicate a different limb. So three limbs on the right-hand side, one limb on the left. The more I say limb, the more it sounds like a strange thing to say. <laughs> it's, it's a word you, you don't use that often, isn't it? Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah. You repeat something often. Off he goes, though, correctly starting this time. Standing on his toes there on that hole, moving in slow motion almost. That's what you have to do on a slab like this. And still pops off. 
Johanna Faber. Nice one, you. Oh, that looked really solid. <clears throat> Sorry. Austrian Cup last summer, she had a fantastic Austrian Cup and perhaps came to the attention of the climbing public where perhaps she hadn't before and, and really sort of stepped into the limelight in that moment. Yeah, I mean, she also, um, also before she already was in a World Cup final. Um, but yeah, like there she was just so consistent and just crushed everything that, yeah, also people who haven't had her on the rudder before, like were like, oh, that's someone to watch. Exactly. <laughs> but I'm really glad she did because yeah, um, she's always been strong, but like last year she just, executed it perfectly in all the comps she attended and that just was great to watch. And also watching her climb in finals in Salt Lake was also great and yeah, really well deserved. One thing I'm loving about the competition scene this year is how many potential podium finishers we have. Every time athletes come out, they, they could make the podium, they could make the finals. It's just so exciting to watch. It's anyone's game at the moment. Yeah, that's amazing. Like. If it's always the same podium, I would not say, well, not boring, because it's still, we still see great climbing, but it's just nice to switch it up and have like so many athletes being, yeah, be, having the shape to be on the podium. So you feel like every comp it can be different and that's super cool. And yeah, I think this year it's like this in women and men, which is great. Yeah. Wonderful to watch. And remember, you can go back and watch all of the live streams from this week. We started off with speed for the European Cup. We then moved on to paraclimbing, which was my first paraclimbing commentary event. And I've got to say, it was one of the most exciting competitions that I've ever actually been part of. It's wonderful to watch. Do please go back and see that on the IFSC YouTube channel. Yesterday, we had the semi-finals for the lead, followed by the finals. And what a finals that was. If you want to watch drama, well, Go back and check out some of that. And now we're in the semi-finals for the bouldering, and tonight it's the bouldering finals, our final, final, final competition of this week. We got a, we're seeing a replay here of Johanna finally sticking that last move. I think like she fell there twice on the last move. Like we have seen some competitors going with left hand, which looks slightly easier, but also Futaba Ito did with right hand and made it work. So, as we said earlier before, both things work. Maybe maybe left hand is a bit easier, but... Yeah, lots of different styles, as we see. Mejdi Schalk using heels and toes to great effect. Eyeing up that final press. Such a shouldery move. Another pop-off. <laughs> Kaiorada looks really frustrated about that. He does, doesn't he? Just, I quite. It's interesting watching that feeling. It's almost like, and I've had it myself when you do a boulder problem. It feels like everything's against you, including the boulder. Like it's deliberately spitting you off. Yeah, definitely. And especially with slabs, like sometimes you have the feeling you haven't really climbed, like you haven't really tried hard because always like something pops off either your hand or your foot. So you kind of doesn't. You cannot really fight on it, kind of. So you feel like you go without making a good effort. So that can be really frustrating. Keep an eye on our leaderboard. That will constantly change because some of these athletes haven't completed their four boulders yet. Gives you an idea, of, though, of who's in the top. Six athletes going through into the finals later on. And that is Zhang Wonchon of Korea. He's been away for two years training, getting himself ready. I met him in the gym the other day, like right before the comp started, and he said he's so happy to be back, like to be back competing. It's been such a long time, and he just can't wait to, yeah, get back, give everything. Yeah, one of it, a character for sure. Really wonderful to watch climb. It's very, very consistent as well. Foot on the slab. Laura in his physical move. I think we almost haven't seen the start of that bolt yet being there, right? Like always when so what is it? maybe once or twice, but not so many times. Mostly when they're like at the zone. We see it. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be able to see the beginning of that soon. But Laura eyeing up the final top. 
This will be her second top. Fatigue clearly not playing any difference to her competition, despite her finals last night. Goes up the left hand. We've seen a few different ways of doing that. Latching the crimp and matching it. Great effort. Oh, it was a flash. That was really quick. Flash for Laura. Yeah. Must have been in there for a little bit. But yeah, the start, I think, is, takes some time. So. Yeah, I think that was perhaps a replay of her send there. Probably. Come on, Nikolai. Oh, such an improbable looking Good move, job. that isn't it? Using flexibility there. Yeah, left foot up, right at the top of that foot, um, foot hold. Nice. Yes, that was really important. Because that's his third top. And as we know, three tops right now. Meet a good position in the men. Yeah, the men's boulder is certainly climbable at the moment, which does mean that attempts to the top are going to become all important. These flashes will start to become vital as we get through. But Big screen from him. He knew he got that even before he matched it. Yeah, yeah because he knew, like, ah, I'm not going to give that away now again <laughs> anymore. But yeah, I think the last boulder of the men's um, semi final is the hardest. It's the only one that only has seen one top by Nathaniel Coleman. All the others have been topped multiple times. So might come then down to that one or two so even. Yeah, sometimes we see the root set as sort of putting in a, a really difficult boulder as, as sort of the separator, you know? So you get athletes who might or may not be able to climb certain boulders and there'll be one that's like, right, this is, this is gonna separate the top six from everyone else. Exactly. And as we've seen uh, Alexi trying now, already the zone on that boulder is hard to get. Like, it's really hard to get into that shoulder hold, press hold. Zhang Wanchan as he thumb catches that little green hold underneath the purple volume. Brings it down, putting all his weight on that right foot. It's very, very small. It's about half a thumb, if that, that right foot he's standing on. Oh, slips off. Good effort to stay on there. So Wunchon levitating up the wall, apparently. Oh, Actually, you can slip. fight on a slab, <laughs> because that looked like kind of like a fight. It's true. <laughs> Staying on there. A top for France's Mikel Mawam. Good effort from him. Left foot and a press. To finish things Seemed off. Seems like he also did that toe catch method that his competitor Mitsu did. Maybe French competitors like toe hook catches. That's the right I read it like this. Toe hook training, maybe. Are we going to see a zone here for Alexi? Presses. Although he touched it, he's got to mm. control it. He's got to use it. That. That would have been important to him, but... Because right now he's in fourth position, and that zone would have put him in second position, so... It just shows how it's not only about are. tops. Yeah, exactly. It's not only about tops. How do you train for something like that? When you're doing sort of comp simulations with the Austrian team, how does that work? Because we see a lot of these on Instagram and social media for athletes doing comp simulations. Talk me through yeah. what that means. Mm, I would say, like for me, for example, it doesn't feel like 100% like a comp. But um, if our team or our coaches organize it, they try to make it feel like a comp. So really make sure we haven't seen the boulders before. We don't see the other athletes. We don't know what's going on. There's uh, there are real like real <laughs> real judges. Um, like professional churches who have like uh, the education for it. Um, we have brushes, we have everything sorted like in a comp. Um, we warm up like in a comp and everything. I mean, it still feels different because it's usually, uh, yeah, it's not exactly the same. But um, also, they try to make like the comp, like the style of a comp style boulder. So they get good setters to set professional comps, uh, comp style boulders or roots. So I think it's really good, first of all, 
we made it a lot because we didn't have like national comps um, last year to get selected for international comps. So it's a good way to do like a selection to check like who from the team um, is in good shape and should be competing in the comps. But also it's a good practice. Like it's always like trying to get in a mindset really trying to see it as a comp and climb as it would be a World Cup. Um, so it's good for your mental game, it's good for practicing comp style boulders, so it really helps and we do it more and more now since a, lot, uh, a few years. So lots of action going on, Miho Nanaka topping out, Kai Hadrada and then Stasek Gale getting through that boulder. Sorry for talking about this. No, <laughs> these, it's, don't these worry, it's fascinating. These for such a long time, so we missed so many tops. It's fascinating to hear. But Miho Nanaka, yeah, she was she was climbing last night. As you watch a replay here of Stasha from Serbia, topping out that boulder. True personality on the comp scene is Stasha. And she'll be looking to get into a final. She's certainly got the potential to make a final. Suta Amagasa. Really close on that last move. And, and also you being really close. That last move looks really hard. Like we've seen some athletes attempting it, but not sticking it. Yeah, we watch a replay of this. She goes up with the right hand and just peels off it. Francisca Stella is still the only one to climb that boulder. And she was the first one out, so. Now you see how hard that one is. <laughs> exactly. Do you think that, oh, can we just, hang on, I'll see that in a second as we see another top from Rai Sugimoto. Japanese athletes really putting in some performances here today as we watch this again. Up with the right hand, looks like a long way on the replay and it is swinging out and matching. Big moves from him. We have seen we have seen tops on every boulder now, except women's number four. So that that one still open to get the first top. Place your bets now. Who's going to get that? <laughs> we have some stars coming out soon. Everyone climbing here is a star, to be honest. The level of competition is unbelievable. Johanna swinging out that. You can see that white hold blocking a little bit. The crimp, so you have to be very accurate. Big right hand slap. Let's we'll see on. if she can get it this time. She's looking to smash it's up really with the right powerful hand. powerful move. Really close. As you've seen, like also the moves before are really powerful. So you're already tying getting to that last move. So I think it's a really tiring boulder. There we go. That's the end. The top indicated by that pink arrow and a top in a blue circle. That's what the athletes are looking to match with both hands in order to get the points. Buzzer goes, five minutes on the clock. That is our men's current leaderboard. Six athletes, remember, going through to the final. Nathaniel Coleman leading the way with three tops and one zone. Full yellow box means a top, half a yellow box means a zone. No color in the box means no zone, no top. And for the women, put by Ito leading the way. Two tops, two zones. Certainly less tops for the women at the moment, showing how difficult they are to climb. Something I always wonder, Hannah, is the athletes who qualify first from the qualification, they come in last. But by that point, you've had 20 athletes using the holds. So there's a lot of chalk, sweat going on. It can prove quite tricky, can't it? For those athletes coming last. Despite the brushes, you still, the climbing on holds have been used a lot. Definitely, it definitely makes a difference. Um, but I mean, especially like even, especially in qualification, it makes a bigger difference because imagine the people climbing last, like they're even more competitors. And also um, when we had the qualification on Thursday here, like the later you climbed, the hotter it was. So. Um, so in every round it makes less difference, let's say, but it always makes a difference, of course, because we just watched top from Mao. Nakamura there getting a top, fantastic performance from her. And also we saw briefly Akio Noguchi, who I'm sure we'll see in a second, 
She's out on the mats. Look at that top though. Out with the left hand again, changing beta, different way of doing it. Big smiles from her. <laughs> mm, but what I was about to say also, it depends on the holds because there are some holds who really soak up the chalk and brushing doesn't help so much. But um, there are also some holds who quite have a good friction where you where the brushing helps a lot. So it also depends on what holds the root setters use. Tomoe Narasaki getting a top. Look at that, <laughs> look at the way he did that. It was casual, he just sort of popped up. So easy. I love his style of climbing. I think watching him climb is just such a joy. Like, he makes it look so easy though when he does it. Like, when he tops a boulder, it almost always looks easy. Laura on, what is she on? On women's three. Big sign for warm up, pro reading. <laughs> but that physical start boulder for her. She's just having a look, two minutes 16 on the clock. As we watch, I think a replay of Zhang Wonchon here as he's aiming for the top. Can he get it done? Brings the right hand in in that more controlled style than we saw. Good job. <laughs> Great job. Julia Shanodi with a big swing, not quite managing to make it stick. Laura swinging down. Athletes all over the place during the semi-finals. Swinging Pop. around. Swinging around, exactly. <laughs> What a wonderful sport we get to commentate on here, Hannah. Yeah, I enjoy it. As I said, I think the root setters did a good job of um, including a lot of different movements and different styles into that semi-final. Nikola Uznik with that big right hand press. We're seeing this boulder proving very difficult. Look at that thumb press there from Akio Noguchi, and she was one of the athletes climbing last night. In fact, bronze medal for Akio. Laura just missing that powerful move to the left. 20 years old, an Olympian. One of many, many, many Olympians here at these events. Expect to see the Olympians climbing till probably about uh, uh, Vilas and then Brian Son, we're going to see less Olympians as they head off to Japan. Nikolai Uznik. Nikolai's last boulder. Oh, maybe work this time too. Ah, nice. That was really important. Okay, that was super important though. Because before he really struggled to cut loose the toe hook, like from the start. Now he made it work and that was really important because, as we said, that's proven to be the hardest boulder in that round. And um, not everyone got the zone, so that already puts him in a really good position. And he's currently second place now because he has three chops in eight attempts and four zones. First place still in the family of the only one to top that last boulder. Um, maybe there already it made a difference to come out so early because you see those orange slopers. There's quite a lot of chalk on them already. They might be a bit worse already, so might might have been a factor as well. And he's just really strong as well, of course. Yeah, that zone being the all-important deciding factor at the moment. Athletes won't necessarily know that, but there is a scoreboard in the stadium, so they might be having a look out and realizing the importance of that boulder four. Kokoro Fuji of Japan starts his semi-final. I mean, most of these athletes are already really experienced, so I guess also when they're at the boulder, they could feel like if it's top a lot or if it's easy, if it's hard, and then they also, if they get a zone that they really had, had to fight for, they kind of know, okay, Probably not everyone got that one, and probably that was important, and that was good, so. So to Amagasa, oh, with it, even Ooh. more different style. That was like a, a dino all the way up to the top there. That was really close, good fight. Let's see that again, look at that. Yeah, two hands 
in the air at the same time, grabbing it, holding it so close. That would have been a, a fall if he'd gone from the top of that. Awesome job from him. Such a fascinating boulder to watch, that one. Kai Hedrada, let's see how he deals with the jug. Oh, oh just wow. a casual, almost looking back at the audience there with that swing. That was amazing. Oh. Top in style. My shoulders scream out in sympathy when I see moves like that. Great job from him. Look at that. Just, a, just styling it out at the top. And I think we have seen another top of Stasha Geo on Woman number three. Maybe we can get a replay on that one because we have only seen one top before from Franzi. Stasha putting herself in contention. That is Natalia Grossman of the USA. She's come off the back of two wins. Ooh, nice. Two World Cup wins, and she cruises through that. Bit more dynamic approach from the last move there. But made it work. Yeah, she is one that we'd certainly expect to be coming close to the finals. Having a wonderful season for her so far. As Johanna Faber with a big heel in the press, and she's going to be looking to slap that right hand. Yeah, as a reminder, that's the only boulder not being topped, so we would love to see a top on that one. I think there have been people coming close to it, being on the last move, but not quite many yet. Miho Nonaka topping out that boulder. Action-packed semi-finals. My name is Matt Groom. I'm with Hannah Schuber in the commentary box. Hannah, an athlete, an expert, and so far providing, well, just straight up providing some wonderful, oh, I said so far. Wouldn't, no, I said, I was laughing about expert, actually. <laughs> not, not about anything oh, else. Oh, you are an expert. <laughs> We're providing some really great insights on movement and the athletes here, so thank you so much for joining me. As Kogoro Fuji comes up with the right hand. Good job. Really precise, like really getting that hold. Really good. Yeah. One minute 11, he gets to go back and rest. And of course, that's worth considering because the quicker the athletes do the boulders, I mean, it counts towards their points, but also they get more chance to rest as well. Exactly. Especially um, when it's powerful boulders and you take the whole five minutes, um, you sometimes it's really hard to recover in five minutes, especially when there's like another powerful boulder coming up or a really exhausting boulder coming up. So it's always, yeah, flash is always good for the score, but also good for the rest. And saving skin, of course. Especially when you competed in lead and bouldering, skin might be a factor as well here. Like, Jak I talked to Jakob yesterday after finals, and he said, yeah, his skin is not so good anymore. For someone new to climbing, the idea of sort of saving your skin sounds a bit bizarre. Why, <laughs> why do athletes lose skin in the first place? Um, because some of these holds are really like sharp and have a friction on it that, yeah, we, do you say sharp or like really? Yeah, sharp or rough, I guess. Rough, better yeah, way. you probably say rough. So the more you hold those holds and volumes and small screws or whatever, the more you leave skin on them, kind of, and do skin on it. Especially also when you slip off, actually, not only holding, but when you like, for example, you jump, like Laura does now, and then you slip off. And if it's a really rough and sharp hold, you kind of slide down all the way, like you hold hand, so. Yeah, so take a layer of skin off and you've only got so many layers before you start yeah, hitting exactly. some blood. And then sometimes the heat makes it even worse, so. Depends on the skin, like there are a lot of different skin types. Like no, some people have dry skin, some people have sweaty skin, so you cannot really say like what's the best because, yeah, everyone has to deal with their own skin anyway, so they, try, they can try to save it or try to make the best out of it, but yeah, you cannot change your skin, unfortunately. <laughs> have skin transplant. Skin transfusion, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, in case you were wondering, I think, I don't know if you see it right now, but some people might also call, uh, clamp with tape on their fingers. Sometimes that is because they're bleeding through because the skin is already so thin and they're, like all the skin layers are already gone. Um, or they have a cut, so like their finger, like, yeah, 
their skin cut open and um, they have like a split so um, they might bleed and you're not allowed to bleed while climbing. You're not allowed to lead any blood on the holds, on the wall. So you have to cover it immediately, otherwise you have to stop climbing. Akio Noguchi now, oh, easily sticking that big, powerful slap out to the left. Will she bring the left up or the right? Left up, matches Akio with two tops out of two. Akio looks like she's switched gear recently. It's like she's suddenly, I mean, she's always, she's always up there, I appreciate it, but this, certainly this competition, she's so strong. And what's Jongwon Chon matching that? Good he's job. back to competition climbing, and you get the feeling that he's loving every second of that. Look at <laughs> yeah, you can see that he's really enjoying that. So fun to watch is Jongwon Chon. Look at that. He hasn't even matched it yet. Natalia Coleman, as she presses into this tricky slab into that thumb and that's catch. Brooke Rabatou. Oh, so, so sorry. It's, you're entirely right. That's Brooke we saw, Rabatou. We saw the top of Natalia already. But they look really similar from, from behind. Yeah. yeah, and best friends, of course. Here's some wonderful pictures of those two. Brooke getting a silver medal last night in the lead. Her first lead senior finals. Coming over the silver medal, showing the form she's currently in. Job done for Brooke. Narasaki. Sorry. Yes. Tama Narasaki getting the top there. Two tops for him. Focused face as he brings that right hand in. We've seen so many different approaches to that boulder. It looked really solid again. It did, didn't it? Really controlling that movement with a minute 37 to go. Laura on this very difficult women's four. So Hannah, we haven't seen anyone unlock this yet. What do you think the secret might be for this boulder? Is it just too hard to tell from the ground? It's really hard to tell. I think some people already made it up to almost the last move, so made that thing work, but already what she's doing now, like sitting on that yellow one, it's really hard to get the height to get to the next hole. So you, it's really powerful, but also really having to sit on that foot really well. Um, also, it looks like it's really hard to get to the right here. You have to move your balance, your body, and everything to the right side to like weight those this right hold, like to get the weight on your right hand. It looks really hard to do that. It does, Lara, pressing, pressing, pressing. Centimeters at a time up, and of course, every centimeter bump that she makes takes more out of your shoulders. Especially after the third women's boulder is already such a powerful boulder, as I said before, like when you spend the five minutes working that um, third boulder, then having five minutes rest, which probably feels like 30 seconds to you <laughs> and when you're tired, then working that powerful fourth boulder might be really hard. Mishiko Ogata, oh, second oh, penultimate athlete to come out. Doesn't quite make it. And we have our final athletes out onto the stage. Two athletes who we know very well, Jakob Schuber and Janja Garnbrecht. Janja winning last night her competition. There she is at the very end in white. And your brother. <laughs> so go on, let's get some, let's get some uh, behind the scenes insights here. How is Jakob feeling? What's going on with that? How's he all doing after his silver medal, uh, gold medal, sorry, last night? Um, I only shortly talked to him yesterday, like, because, yeah, he had another come going on today, so not so much time, but yeah, he was super happy. I mean, of course, he also said he would have loved to see the fight of Adam up there, um, because, yeah, it's always like, as a competitor, you always want to win with, like, a close, good fight. And as we know, like, Adam slipped yesterday, so you couldn't really see, like, what he could have done with that route. So, of course, he was curious, but he also knows that's part of the game, and he also knows sometimes you're also lucky, and maybe you win because someone slips or whatever. So, yeah, he was really happy about it. I think there's nothing better than winning at home. Yeah, that's um, sport, isn't it? You have to sometimes just take your chances when they come, and... Easy advantage. That's Yanya Garnbrecht, gold medalist last night in the lead. A wonderful boulder. And look at that hand movement. She rocks up, making quick work of the zone, certainly. Can she finish it off with the top? Shakes out that right hand, thumb press into that black hole. Tiptoes the left in to stand on that slopey volume and can't quite make it work. Off 
Natalia Grossman slapping out to the dishes, making the physical move look really very easy there. Yeah. She's in an amazing shape right now. I mean, no doubt about that. We saw that in Salt Lake and in my ring already, but proving it again here. Yeah. Absolutely destroying the boulders currently. Oh. Another bit. <laughs> I think we've seen so many different methods. I don't know if we've seen that one before, but also look kind of cool. Someone make a highlight reel of that boulder. It's awesome to see. Yeah, that's also something so cool about climbing that you can see a boulder being topped in so many multiple ways and so many different ways. And actually a boulder can look like a completely different boulder with different people climbing it. Top for me, Hope. Great performance from her. She looks back in control as usual. Miho Nanaka, 24 years old, and yet a complete veteran of this sport, so experienced. She knows this game, and Yanya takes a big slip off the top there on women's one, just showing how difficult that is. She's got two minutes 15 left on the clock, though, so plenty of time to unlock it. There, that foot slip, you can just see. She was Before right her hand edge. slipped, and now her foot. That's really annoying. Frustration as we watch Yanya fight. Jakob now. Come on, Jakob. Like, Jakob is one of those people who doesn't really like slaps, but he tried to work on them a lot now because he knows that it's really important also for the Olympics. And I think he improved a lot. Like, it's always hard when you have like a kind of a big weakness or like, yeah, like a weakness in general that matters so much. So um, I think every progress and every top at a slap he makes is like really good for his con confidence boost, especially looking to, to the Olympics. Oh, no, just, just missing it. I think Damn. weakness is a... Uh is an interesting word. Huh? I think weakness is an interesting word because I mean, like the, the sheer strength of this. But you're right. When you're the strongest in the world and you're competing against another strongest in the world, yeah. even a tiny little bit of lack of confidence or, or, or as you said, weakness in that, that's what you have to train at that kind of level. Yeah, and it's also we have to admit that we don't have so many slabs here in Innsbruck to train. So it was really cool that we. Um, actually had this wall that's built up now like a part of it not the whole thing because they made it bigger um, but we had part of this wall that was also used at the world championships in 2018 build up um, in a place like just around the corner so um, it was actually a plan right away to build that up for Jakob and Chessy to train for the Olympics because the wall in Tokyo is also going to be really flat and really yeah really slabby so it's really important to train that style there um, so yeah, and I think it helped a lot, like Jakob and Jesse both really improved in it. And it's also just good for your head, right, to just having a feeling you, you trained it. And Jakob with 12 oh, seconds to go, he's going to have to motor, but he has got time and just bobbles off the foot and comes down and you can see frustration on his face there. He was very, very yeah. close. I feel like that's why, like, now he felt like it was actually possible. I could have done that. I'm, I got better and... Maybe in the past he wouldn't have come so far, but it took him a, maybe a bit more time than the others because he's still working on it and maybe he's not good, as good at slaps as maybe some Japanese or whatever. They sometimes walk up there. Um, but now he, he had the feeling he could do it and that's why it's so frustrating and he just would have needed like a bit more time. But especially on a slab, you probably don't have that time because you can only do a few tries. Yanya Garnbrett there, we just saw topping out her problem, working out the slab sequence yeah. at the last moment. I think she probably, I mean, she felt she could have done it first go, but then always something popped, like her hand, her foot, and another time her hand, I think. So wasted some attempts there, or, or like wasted, but like could have saved some attempts there. Um, but... Sorry, Hannah, I'm just watching that this beta on the top, bottom left of our screen. Different approach. Not using the jump crawling across that bottom slab. Being this creative. Amazing to watch. Is I'm it? Uh, it's Mao Nakamura. Not sure that's the way forward, but I like seeing it. Yeah. I feel like there's every time there's like a run and jump in a comp, there's one person at least who's trying to do it statically yeah. or differently. Usually I'm that person when it's like a comp where I'm competing <laughs> because I'm really good at run and jumps. But yeah. Wow. 
would be not a normal comp if not one person would try to do it. She got a gata there it. getting a top. Yeah, no, you're right. I, I, and I actually quite like seeing it. People who try to break the beater on yeah. boulders. Because I can imagine a root set is just fuming backstage. <laughs> I mean, like, no, that's not what I intended. Tomorrow, Narasaki gets a second top for him. <laughs> Currently ranked 11, but there's a lot of climbing here to go. Brooke Rabatu goes up with the right hand, snatches, gets the top for her. That women's two proving to be one of those boulders you have to climb if you want to make it into the finals. Tomoa, really good position. It almost feels like it's like, hey, give me something harder. The first few boulders were too easy. <laughs> but the last boulder is supposed to be the hardest, so wait for it, Tomoa. It's coming. Yeah, <laughs> you'll see in a minute. It gets physical. Mao Nakamura, she was the athlete crawling across that bottom slab, trying a different approach. Let's see now if we stick with her, what she attempts. Will she go back to the jump method? Let's I'm, have a look. I'm telling you now, I think we're going to see this last ball at the top. Big claim from Hannah Schubert. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I mean... No, like... no, no, we've got money on it now. It's there, <laughs> no, it's out no, there, no, everyone's no money, heard it. No money, no <laughs> money. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, they're like... There's so many strong ones that are coming up, like Brooke and Natalia and Yanya and Akio and Miho. So I'm pretty sure someone will do it. I mean, we haven't seen like the top of it yet. Maybe it's impossible, but I still, I, I'm faithful. I still, one of them will do it. Akio coming up with the right hand, just dropping that with a minute 44 to go. She's all the way to the top, so she'll have a moment just to compose herself. She's unlocked all the sequence now. It's just putting it together. Coming up 10 to 12 here, Central European time in Innsbruck, Austria. And you're watching the semi-finals of the Boulder Cup. Sorry, Boulder World Cup. Fourth Boulder Cup of the season for the IFSC. Watching 20 athletes compete for six places in the final. Remember, you can download the IFSC app. It's free to download. That gives you live updates of the scoring, and we'll keep you updated with the scoreboard as well. But things are constantly changing and evolving here as the 20 athletes make their way through their full folders. Akio. Ah, yes. Nice. Getting a top on number three. Yeah. yeah, she had to fight for that one. She did. <laughs> and then you could see she sort of unlocked it, took a moment, and then the send comes. Send is one of those very climbery words I find myself using. It just means you've done it. You've, you've climbed the boulder. It's one of those sort of colloquial climbing terms you'll hear thrown around the climbing world a lot. Yeah, it's like send, beta, and all those things. Like someone not related to climbing probably is like, what is beta? But what are you talking about? It's one of the great things about learning a new sport is the sort of terminology. Because you feel like you're entering a secret world where everyone's yeah. talking differently and then you gradually unlock that it. That new vocabulary. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Zhang Wonchon, oh, just enjoying his moment back under the competition lights, so to speak. That's our current leaderboard. Nathaniel Coleman has led the way for a long time now. With three tops, one zone. Yeah. Uznik in second. He came out really early, but really had a really good round. That's why it's so hard sometimes in semis when like, my, some people think, yeah, the first one's coming out. Probably they're not doing so well because they're qualified in like last place or something. Um, or like first, uh, like last place in qualification. So like really close. Um, and then they sometimes think, oh no, the boulders are too easy because there's so many cops tops, but you forget that everyone who is on a Boulder World Cup semi is freaking strong. <laughs> That's really how it is. Absolutely. We are watching world-class athletes performing at the limits of their ability here. As Yanya Garnbrett stands up into the zone on that dual textured hold. Remember the black sections of those holds almost well, completely without friction really, just plastic to stand on. Bumps up with the right hand. Looking for the left now. What tactic will she use at the top as she sticks the dish, right or left? Oh, yes. Left for Yanya, matches. Two tops out of two for her. Great effort from Yanya, you can see that angle, how small that left hand crimp is. Good job. 
Natalia Grossman with the heel hook. Quick progress on that. This is a replay of this moment. Yeah, nails it. Quick process on that one. No problem for her. So with three minutes to go, we've almost got empty mats out there. We've got Jakob still going. Miho Nanaka down the end. Yeah. Tops are coming in quickly now. Kokoro Fuji with a top. Yeah, Kokoro is also in a really good position already. Top first three boulders. Miho Nanaka is one of those athletes that we'd expect to be able to get close to this women's force, certainly one who had the ability to do it. So, Yeah, I saw one attempt of her before, and she already had the hold in her hand before the top, so she was already really close. But, yeah, hopefully she could do it. A boulder that I would imagine in my head is more suited to Jakob here, this powerful boulder. It's really dynamic, so it's not his first choice, but he, he's got a lot better at that as well. So his first choice would be a powerful boulder, and then it would be this. <laughs> so that's also why I'm still faithful, because probably the like kind of easiest way to top three boulders would be the first three. But um, because he didn't do the slab, I'm still faithful. He can, he's one of them who can do the last one. I'm sure like it's a boulder he can do. I read out a stat about Jakob last night. I think, I can't remember the exact number. It was around about 50 podiums, or over 50 podiums in his time. It's, I lost track as it's well. It's right? unbelievable when you think about that number. Just such an experience, such a successful athlete. Miho Nanaka not quite unlocking that boulder, but she's got a minute and a half, so she, she stands really back. really close. I think we have never seen someone being so close to the boulder. Um, but yeah, I lost track of the stats as well. Like. I think um, uh, someone mentioned his like record again yesterday with like seven World Cup victories in a row, but that was 2011. <laughs> yeah. That was 10 years ago. So when you think like he already did seven victories there, like how far it goes back to count that medals. I, I mean, 10 years ago, I was 13. I, <laughs> I did not count the medals of my brother back then. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> So to Amagasa, not unlocking M4. He's still fighting for it, though. It takes a moment to chalk up the 48 seconds to go. Miho, let's see if she can do this. Presses that right hand out and just pops the heel. And you get the feeling Miho might have reached the end of her power here. 30 seconds to go, he actually calls it. Her semi-finals done. Miho Nanaka currently sitting in third place. Ito Futa, Ito Futa in first place. Miho Nanaka, second, sorry, Miho Nanaka and Akio Noguchi in third currently, followed by Stashigeo, Johanna Faber, and Laura Rogora currently are our top six. There we go, that's confirmation of it. We didn't see too much of Stasha, but Obviously on form at the moment. She's one of the athletes who didn't compete in the lead final, so perhaps slightly fresher for her. Bouldering specialist for sure. Akio Noguchi starts cleaning up that women's four. And Ashiba here has a lot of money riding on someone topping it. <laughs> Let's see, I want to see it sent. I, I still have faith, I still have faith. But Miho already came so close, so. I'm, I'm still confident someone could do it. I do actually agree with you, Hannah. <laughs> I think we're going to see that go. There's a Kyo, the athlete, to do it. Let's see. Rabatu takes the swing on women's three. Gata there, fighting hard. And in the background, there's Akio. Yeah, she's pressing into this. Watch that Let's heel, though. See. That's where we've seen the pops. Flipped with the hand there. That's something you... And then flipped back again. Yeah, I think that's the way to do it. First shoulder, then underclean. Here we go. Could this be the moment? Akio getting stood up and ready. Brings that left hand in. 
Now the feet up on that initial black hold. She's looking for the top. But that last move still looks so hard. Oh. So many hand flips. It's really hard because she has so much like, yeah, her body is like so much turned down and then she has to go all the way up and turn her body to the other side. So it's like flipping completely. And that's why it's so hard as well to like hold the swing, hold the tension. If you're just joining, welcome to the semifinals. We're at the end of the semifinals now. The last couple of athletes climbing and things have been tense here in Innsbruck. Some wonderful problems as Yushiko Agata brings that left leg back in order to balance his body and eyes up that final hold. Big jump for him. Ah, oh, just casually hangs and nails it. A little pull up at the end. I think if you get it at the right spot, it's quite a good hold. Just have to get it on top. Yeah, it's it's slopey, but fairly, I'm looking at it now, fairly, there's a quite a big dish on it, which is enough for these athletes. A jug for them. A jug is a hold that is a bit like a jug, really. A, a, a pouring jug, <laughs> a pouring jug, like a water jug. So it's got a, it's got a big- It's good. <laughs> yeah, it's good, there we go, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> trying to define something that doesn't need defining, isn't it? Just a jug simple, is a good hold. <laughs> just simply say it, it's good. <laughs> There's a lot of space exactly. on there where you hold it. Yeah, it's big. It's Tom big. <laughs> tomorrow, Narasaki on M4. <laughs> this has proved to be the hardest problem for the man, and you can see the effort he has to put into that just to stay on the wall, let alone move. Akio, she was close before. She's got a minute 40 to do this. She's one of those athletes who needs to get the beater locked in, and often it comes on the next go. Let's see. Getting that zone on men's number four already put Tomoa in the first position, though. So that was, as we said before, that zone is really important. So he currently is first, which means currently means he's in a good position for finals, <laughs> let's say it like that. Not, not spoiling the results yet. <laughs> It's amazing, but, um, 20 yeah. competitors, four boulders, and it comes down to one hold on a boulder problem. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, of course, you have to top already three boulders, too. <laughs> that, that it makes a difference, but still, yeah. I mean, but that's why, like, a boulder should always consist of, like, two sections, kind of. It already should be hard to get to the zone, and it should be hard to get to the top. Because if everyone who gets the zone gets the top, then you don't need no zone. And yeah, and if everyone makes this zone in the first attempt, then that also doesn't make it. Uh, so it's hard for the root setters, but that's usually the goal, like to make it hard to the zone and to the top. The women not needing too many tops currently, there's... So powerful. You can get two tops and still get in. So Brooke looking still good, even though she hasn't managed to top that one. She has two tops to her name so far. That's our leaderboard currently for the men's Boulder Sarah final. Tomo Narasaki leading the way with three tops and one zone, followed by Nathaniel Coleman. Now, they both have the same score, but it will be going down to attempts to the top. That's how they're separated. Back to top three separated like that. Same for the women. Top three all separated by attempts to top. Six athletes going through. And Johanna Faber, she's on the button. She's in the danger point at the moment. And well, let's be honest, Janja is still to come, so <laughs> it's going to be really hard to not let her pass her. But I mean, anyway, I think you did a really, really good job. I mean, she's going to be a bit um, annoyed about that third boulder because she fell at the last move, I think, like two or three times and got really close. But yeah, I think there's a lot of things to be happy about. I mean, being in the top 10 in a World Cup or top eight even is like really, really strong and she can be really proud about that. Yanni yeah, Gambrit making easy work of that first dyno. Cruising through this boulder, very much in her style. But here's the crux of this, the tricky move. Oh, yes. ah, no tricky move for Yanya, easy. Top for her. Not tricky for her. Not tricky for her. <laughs> the crux for mortals, not for Yanya Gambrit. She exits the stage. Three tops out of three so far for her. putting her likely in the final at this stage. But we shall see. She gets bumped up to fifth position after that top. Right, that is 
Natalia Grossman looking at women's four, taking a long look at women's four. As Jakob brushes up his next climb. Currently with one top, two zones. Jakob starting perhaps to show a little sign of fatigue, which is understandable considering he won the lead last night. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Great competition so far. So much action going on. As Natalia gets through that first start of this problem, reaches up with the left. Eyes Looking the top. really good. Touches the final hold. I think that hold before the top is pretty bad because otherwise they would maybe like quickly match it as well. I think it's really hard to hold it and get around there. Jakob now pressing up to that right hand. Two minutes 20, plenty of time for him. There was something I was really scared of because he's really struggling with flexibility sometimes. Um, but he, that's also something he really worked on. Ah, makes it work. Nice job. I mean, <laughs> I'm talking here about weaknesses of my brother as it would be, as he would have a lot. That's not the case, but it's just... I'm, I'm hardly ever nervous watching him lead climb because he proved so many times that I have nothing to worry about because he always shows what he can. But in bouldering, it's just such a lottery. It's so different. And it so much depends on the style of the boulders. And yeah, if it's a lot about flexibility and slaps, I just know that he struggles more. So that's why I would say it's more of his weakness. But weakness doesn't mean he cannot still climb boulders that have that style in it. So well, I think we, we know exactly what you mean. <laughs> there's still some things where you're better and worse at. It doesn't mean you cannot do them at all, but there's some styles you prefer. Exactly. I mean, even if you're the best in the world, you're still going to have certain things that you personally struggle with. It's not a, exactly. a general weakness. It's just a weakness in your game, perhaps. One minute on the clock as we watch a top of men's four. A rare sight. Kokoro Fuchi, good job. Yeah, Kokoro making that work. Awesome to see. <gasps> and he's the first one to do all four boulders. I just realized. Putting him in first position. Kokoro good Fuchi job. on fire tonight. He'll be in the finals. Natalia's got 36 seconds to make this work. This is going to probably be her last go at this. She's considering another attempt, though, chalking up. But no, I think she's calling it. And Coco is also going to be, for sure, the only one with four tops because the only people still attending that last border are Jakob and Yoshiyuku Ogata, and they both haven't topped the first one. So they can still top it, but not have four tops. So as you can see here, Coco, only one with four tops. Really impressive performance. Coco Fuji and Nafenia Coleman still the only ones to have topped the last boulder. Right, the women's boulder semi-final list at the moment. Futaba Ito is leading the way with three tops and one zone. Miho Nanaka, followed by Natal Natalia Grossman, Akio Noguchi, and Yanni Gambra. People wondering about the lack of Adam Ondra in this final. He uh, competed last night in the lead, deciding not to compete in the bouldering this weekend here in Innsbruck. Picked up a slight shoulder tweak he's just looking after from Salt Lake City, and that's why we haven't seen him yet. And we're seeing a replay here of Natalia. Oh, no, sorry, Brooke Rabatou live. And she locks in that left heel, switches to the right. Only two climbers left on the mats. Okata Yoshiyuki making... Ah, oh, good effort on his last boulder there, getting the zone first go. That's really important, as we mentioned earlier before. Yeah, Brooke Rabatou will be the second to last athlete trying this women's four. We're almost finished here. It's gone quickly, I've got to say. It's been an exciting semi-final, and I've very much enjoyed talking to Hannah Schubert in the commentary box.
giving us an athlete's perspective of proceedings. Yeah, I'm enjoying it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yoshiyuka Ogata eyeing up this men's fall. We know how hard it is, so few tops. Currently ranked eighth. As is Brooke Rabatou, eighth position at the moment. She brushes up the hold. She'll need to get the zone here in order to break into that top six. Holds the swing nicely. Up to the zone, pressing, pressing, pressing. I think she already got the zone. Uh, yeah, I think, I think the timing score yeah. wasn't updated quite there. Yeah, but she has to get a top to get into top six. Can she be the first one? Brooke laying it all on the line here. She brings the left Come foot, on, right foot out. Oh, so close for Brooke Rabatou. But time she will have enough time. Yeah, two minutes 28. And this is important to her, as you said, this top vital for her progression into the competition, into yeah. the final round of the competition. Yoshiko Agata there as he makes his way towards the final holds of men's four. Oh, good job. That looks really good. Nice power scream. Oh, yeah, nice. Good job. Well done. Fantastic performance from him. And he needed that. Power screaming his way to the top there with a minute 38. Let's watch a replay of that. Up with the left, press, pinching it. Slaps out to the right, look at that. All power in order to hold that in and make the match. Another replay, great camera angles we've seen so far in this semi-final, really showing off every nuance of these climbs. So exciting to watch. Mishika Agata currently in third place. So guaranteed finals at the moment. That top was really important and especially so quickly as well because it's going to come down to attempts here. Because there are more than six people who have three tops. Brooke Rabatou needs this top if she wants to make it to the finals tonight. Presses out with the right shoulder. Just can't make it work. She's only got 40 seconds. She can't, doesn't have time to rest long here. Just a quick moment to compose herself. Yep, straight back on the boulder. 30 seconds It's going to be tight for her. Swings out, drops the first, and I think Damn. she's done. And that will That's be... That's not going to be enough time, no. Stasha Gale on the button at the moment in sixth place. Yanya Garnbrit in fifth. Those are the athletes. And it's only Yanya who's left to attempt that last boulder. So that's our that's our sixth finalist then, isn't it, on screen? Yeah, and maybe I'm not right and nobody's going to do that boulder, but okay. <laughs> I mean, Yanya usually never disappoints, so if someone can do it, then she, she can do it. But yeah. I mean, Akio, Miho and Brooke all got really close, and Natalia, so... I said it before, we have seen someone attempting the last move, so I didn't know how hard this is what it's going to be. But they all at least made it to the last move, so they got <laughs> close. So I wasn't too far off. I think it was a good call early on. Let's see what Yanya can do with this women's four. Making the first move stick. Now, ah, oh, just dinos up to the left pinch. Wide, wide pinch and presses in. Yanya Gumbrit finding a different level. She hooks the left foot over. Works her way over. Short work of this. Can Yanya Garmbrit flash this boulder? Come on, Yanya. Left hand up, one move to go. High tension here in the stadium. She eyes up the top. Statically brings her hand and just pops off the crib. Almost. We can't even breathe, though, because Jakob's in action. There's Jakob Schubert eyeing up the zone. Presses. Won't uh, I think get that was the, Yeah, I don't think for that zone. No, 
Um, you could see him like hesitating because he didn't know should he put out the left foot first and then rock over the heel and go to the right or like go directly from the toe hook. He tried it like this now, but I think, I don't know if anyone did it like this, but it's a lot harder um, because like this, you have to go into the zone really dynamically and it's not so good. That was a replay of Yanni Gambra just dropping the top. We've seen a few athletes popping for that top. She decided to go very, very statically and almost made it work. Fingers crimping on the final hold. So I don't want to put any more pressure on Jakob. I mean, he doesn't hear me anyway, but he has to chop this boulder if he wants to be in finals. <laughs> Big ask on this boulder for Jakob Big Schubert. ask, yeah. But I mean, it would be a dream scenario to climb together with his good friend Nikolai in finals. So. Come at on. home at the World Cup. I think after winning a gold medal in lead, so I think it could not be more perfect. He can't be disappointed, but I know he'll want to get into that final. And yeah. He's going to give it everything with two minutes, 20 seconds to go as Jan Yagambrit comes into the final section of this boulder. Looks up with the left hand, sticks that. Now she's got to work her feet across and up, which she does, pressing, pressing, pressing. Oh, again, so, so close up to that right hand. If she looks out to the scoreboard, though, she will know that it's enough to get through to the finals, but she'll be wanting to go into the finals in a good position for her. Definitely. Jakob with one minute 50. Huge support from everyone in his hometown here. Just takes a moment to calm down, compose himself. Two tops so far, and he needs a top in order to get into the finals. That's the stakes here in the last minute and a half of this competition. These final two athletes climbing. What a semi-final it has been so far. I might not speak for the rest of it. I'm too nervous. <laughs> Hannah actually said to me, I I'll commentate, but I want to go and cheer Jakob, and I've forgotten all about that until just now. Hannah, are you okay to stay with me in this last yeah. moment, or do you want to go out? Yeah, I know, it's okay. Thank you so much. I was like, ah, yeah, probably going to cheer him on in finals then, and now it's so close, uh, and I know he can do that. I'm just like... Feel free to uh, dash outside, shout something, and then come back if you want. You can go and... Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. I'm, I'm okay. Jakob with a toe hook now, reaching up. 40 seconds on the clock. Right heel hook as he looks to the zone. The press for a fraction. It looked like he had it and then it drops and he's frustrated with 30 seconds to go and calls it a day. Almost doesn't want to leave and the stage. Yanya gets the Yanya top. Yanya with the top. Fantastic way to end this competition. Sad for Jakob, but what a top for Yanya. Okay, so I lost. I did not lose the bet. <laughs> But I lost my brother going into finals. Uh, so I would have switched because Yanya was in finals anyway, but it was great to see it up there. Really was wonderful as you watch this uber slow motion of Yanya going up with the right hand, slightly tweaked her beta there, made it stick. On the last seconds of the last boulder, we get great. a top. Look Jakob at that, Jakob looking. looking. <laughs> Like, oh yeah, I would have wanted that top too. But I think, as I said before, I think the problem was that Jakob wanted to jump out of the toe hook and not trying to release it before. I think the releasing it was really hard. Um, Nikolai almost fell doing it, but he did it and um, made it work. So I guess that was maybe the problem. But yeah, he didn't also have time to do so many attempts. So. Right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Let's have a look at our finalists. Kokoro Fuji, Tamoa Narasaki, Yoshiyuki Ogata, three Japanese athletes. Nathaniel Coleman, Nikolai Uznik, and Simon Lorenzi will take up our top six in the finals tonight. Really, really good. Like, they all did a great performance. And also, as I said before, Simon was really close to making finals in Salt Lake. And now, when Jakob would have topped, he would have ended up in seventh place again. So it's great that he did it this time. He climbed really well. Really happy for Nikolai, of course, as well. Like, now, as I said before, I hope he can show his full potential. And I guess he did. Um, yeah, great. I'm looking forward to having 
an Austrian athlete in its finals. Exactly, in front of a home crowd. That's kind of what we want to see. And that's our last 10, not making it through to the finals, but tough conditions out there for everyone competing. As we have a look at the lead wall again, and we'll see confirmation of the women's results. Here they are. Yann Yugan Brett with that final top. Oh, oh wow. Flashed off <laughs> before I could finish the That names. was quickly. But hopefully um, that will come back. Yann Yugan Brett, Futsa Ito. As we just, we're just getting updated here. Yeah, Futsa Ito, Mihona Naka, Natalia Grossman, Akio Noguchi, Stashik Geo in sixth place. As well, place. three Japanese athletes in finals. So we have six athletes in total because three women, three men. And um, yeah, pretty mixed up again. Like also a lot of different nations otherwise. Austrian, Belgium, two times USA with Natalia Grossman and Nathaniel Coleman and Serbia, Stasha Gale. Right, let's watch some replays of the action that we've seen today. All of the athletes competing hard in the Innsbruck Sun. Right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us watching. Set your alarm clocks for the final tonight as we get one last confirmation of our finalists. My name is Matt Green, and I've been lucky enough to be joined by Hannah Schuber in the commentary box. Hannah, thank you so much. I know <laughs> perhaps you would have liked to have been out there cheering the Austrian team on, but we appreciate your expertise. Thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> no worries. I really enjoyed it. And yeah, I hope everyone liked it. I'm sure they did. How could you not? What a spectacle. Hannah, I'll say goodbye. Thank you so, so much. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon and enjoy the finals tonight. Thanks, you too. See you around. So there we go. Hannah Schubert leaves the commentary box. As we get a final countdown of our scores. What a semi-final that was. Some wonderful boulders. We watch a replay of the women. Miho Nanaka just pressing, pressing up. Let's sit back and enjoy the action. Yanni Gambrek finishing off that final boulder problem in the last seconds of the competition. Great to see a top on that final problem. We're just watching Miho Nanaka there sitting potentially injured, which could put her place in the finals in doubt, which would mean Hannah Faber, she will come through. Miho sitting in that chair at the moment. Time will tell how she is 
not quite sure what happened with that. When I get confirmation of that, I will let you know, but Miho Nanaka certainly looking to be in some distress. Wishing her the best wishes from everyone, and I will let you know when I know what's happening with her, but we'll see. Anyway, later tonight we have the finals. Looking forward to seeing you there. I'll have another guest athlete. Have a wonderful afternoon, everyone, and I will see you very, very soon.